Officers are taking lawful action. In Oregon, that is Portland police officer Corey Budworth. Stay on the sidewalk. Budworth has now been indicted. A grand jury charged him with one count of assault in the fourth degree, a misdemeanor. In August of 2020, the cameras captured him repeatedly striking activist photographer Terry Jacobs. Despite the clashes in Portland and the multiple allegations against police for excessive use of force, the indictment marks the first time a member of the Portland police will face prosecution. If convicted, Budworth could be sentenced up to a year in jail. However, he has not yet been fired. Instead, the police department has now placed him on administrative leave. It is not enough for protesters and too much for Portland police. Budworth's indictment just prompted all 50 members of a police crowd control unit to resign from their assignment. Assignment to that unit is voluntary, and the Portland Police Department says all officers will continue with their regular duties. Hello, everybody. I'm David Schuster, and thanks for joining us. Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler says that with the disbanding of the rapid response team, he has ordered the police department to prepare other forces to respond to public safety teams. In addition, Oregon Governor Kate Brown has directed the state police to have its mobile response team on standby. The Portland Rapid Response Team was described as an all-hazard incident response group with members trained in advanced skills related to crowd management and crowd control. But a U.S. Department of Justice report found that last year, Portland's police department used force more than 6,000 times between June and mid-November. That's a period of roughly six months. The unit was often deployed to protests, including the night of August the 18th, when Officer Budworth was seen repeatedly striking photographer Terry Jacobs. Last fall, Jacobs filed a civil rights lawsuit alleging that Budworth's actions fit a pattern of force used by the department against protesters. According to court records, Jacobs settled with the city in March for $50,000 plus an additional $11,000 in legal fees. The settlement suggests that city officials believe Officer Budworth did break the law, a finding that has now been reached by a grand jury. However, the Portland Police Union is denouncing the indictment. They say Officer Budworth has been, quote, caught in the crossfire of agenda-driven city leaders and a politicized criminal justice system. The police union is describing the mass resignation of the rapid response team as fallout from the fraught relationship between the department and city government. The disbanding of Portland's rapid response team bears a striking resemblance to an incident last year when 57 members of the Buffalo Police Department response team resigned following the suspension of two officers who were filmed shoving a 75-year-old man to the ground. The Buffalo Police Department found other ways to staff up crowd control. Portland will now do the same. And this is how the system should work. If an officer feels like his or her unit should not face criticism for excessive use of force, that officer should quit the crowd control duties and forget about any extra pay the assignment brings. The officer might also consider quitting the police force altogether. If the U.S. justice system, including a grand jury, is too much for an officer's ego, you shouldn't be in law enforcement. Portland will be better off when Officer Corey Budworth is finally kicked off the police force and sitting in jail, and when a new group of police officers is given responsibility for de-escalating protests instead of inflaming them.